Hello, welcome, welcome. This is my channel, Lady Robins. My name is Robin. Welcome to all of you viewers and friends and subscribers. I am really happy that you're all here. We are going to go and talk about my favorite hobby, which is cross stitch. I just came back from a stitching retreat, so there's lots of a discussion of that that's coming up. But I do have whips, finishes, fully finished. I have got plans. I've got purchases. There's just all sorts of stitchy goodness to talk about on this um, on this episode. So sit back, relax, grab your stretching, grab a beverage. I've got mine. Um, today I am in my University of Washington mug from Starbucks. I love these mugs. They're 14 ounces. They hold all sorts of goodness. Today though, my goodness is water. Yep. I need, I need to, to get back on the water bandwagon. I've been a little lax, um, on that front. So I am rededicating myself to drinking my water. So let's have a drink. Perfect. Okay. So if you're new here, welcome. I am Robin. I live in the Pacific Northwest. I just live in a little suburb south of Seattle. We have a beautiful day here today. It is sunny. It is warm. I love it. I'm a summer girl. I am mourning the fact that I think it's Saturday, Friday or Saturday is the official first day of fall. I'm a summer girl. I am solar powered. So I am happy that the sun is is still out and shining on us because I don't like the gloomy fall days. <laughs> so, all right. I have got I have got more nonsense than I know what to do with on the desk in front of me. I think we'll try to do what we normally do, which is talk about finishes and fully finishes, um, then go on to starts and whips, and then we'll talk about the retreat. There's lots of stuff to talk about there. So why don't we start with finishes? Should we start there? I'm going to start with a fully finished object. My husband, my delightful husband, he and I will go to um, Goodwills, we'll go to garage sales, and we'll pick up pictures that we don't necessarily care about, but he resizes the frames to fit my finished cross-stitch pieces. So I have a beautiful finish to show you. And this is Red Bird Sampler. Isn't this wonderful. And look at that frame. Yeah, I think we found this at Goodwill, Goodwill um, you know, probably four or five dollars. It was a much bigger piece and he was able to um, cut it down. He said this is one of the best job on corners he has done. Look at those. You guys, they look so good. He has done an absolutely phenomenal job on finishing this for me. Um, I mount it on um, acid-free map board. I'm a lacer, so I, you know, lace it back and forth. And then he um, cuts the frame to my specifications and then I mount it. Um, we do the, um, um, the tape, I can't remember what it's called. It's a lining tape that um, prevents um, any um, lignin from the um, frames to um, leach into your artwork. Um, it blocks any sort of chemicals or glues. So my, my beautiful Redbird sampler is absolutely in a great safe space. I don't do, um, I don't do glass. Um, not because I'm, I object to glass, but just because it's easier. <laughs> and then I do put a little batting on here at the time that I lace it. So here is our fully finished object. I stitched this um, probably two years ago. I have an under the bed box that is um, a little full. 
<laughs> so I finally got around to finding the perfect frame at um, at Goodwill for Redbird Sampler. So now it is ready to go up on my wall and I couldn't be happier about that. So that is, that is our first and only FFO for the video, but I have some fully finished objects that aren't in their final state, but let me show you what I've got going. Now, if you're, um, if you're a new friend and subscriber, you have not seen me go on and on and on about the piece I'm gonna show you next for years, years, guys. I started a long dog sampler four years ago on Leap Day. Erin, who is two martini stitcher, um, she said, let's do um, a long dog Leap Day sal and let's, um, you know, finish it in four years. We have four years to finish it. Well, I was like four years and eight months, <laughs> but it's done. It's done, you guys. I have finally finished Cardinal Points. Look at that. That's the whole thing. Let me bring it up close so you can view those beautiful cardinals. Yeah, there is a lot of color changes in here, which is what makes it so beautiful. Um, the um, centering of these, um, these phrases here took me forever and a day. I had to take them out twice before I got them centered, but you know, my perseverance paid off. They now look great. The first time I, um, I finished like this half, I showed it to my husband. I'm like, is that, is that centered? He goes, nope. <laughs> so I had to recount and, uh, finally got it, um, got it in the right spot. It was, it was a struggle. I, I'm not exactly sure why it was as much of a struggle because it's like you counted, divide it in half. And then what you're charting, divide it in half, right. And put, you know, half on the left and half on the right. It, it was just, it was really challenging for some reason. I don't know. I, I thought that was weird how long it took. And, you know, and it took three tries. It wasn't like, okay, I goofed the first time and then I fixed it the second time. Nope. Second time still wasn't right. But it's done now. It's done now. So um, at, um, I stitch in hand, so I have not washed it yet, which is why I haven't ironed it. Because I don't want to iron it and then iron in um, dirt and grime. So um, this is just stitched on a 32 count antique white Lugana. And I've used all the called for gentle arts and it's glorious. It's so, it's so cool. I just can't even, I can't even, right? I can't stand how good it looks. So I'm, I'm really excited to finish that. We'll have to go dig through the box of frames out in the garage and see what we've got out there. And who knows, we might just have to, might just have to go, you know, garage sale and to see if we can find something, if there's nothing that works in the box. So that is a huge finish for me. Huge, huge, huge. And in fact, I, um, I've got, um, I've got a stitch journal. This is by Chris Yo of As the Yo Flies. And I was thinking, I was thinking I should find out what exact, um, date I started it on. Um, which you're going to know it's February 29th, right? So it's February 29th, 2020. And I finished it August 24th, 2024. So there we have it. There, there is my fantastic stitch journal. You can see there's, um, there's columns where you can put the, um, you know, the name of your project, your start date, your finish date, and your fully finished date. And you will see that there are quite a number of things where they're finished, but they're not fully finished. So I'm not exaggerating when I tell you I have a huge under the bed box. Finishing is not my favorite thing. It just isn't. Um, but anyway, there you go. I was just thinking um, red bird sampler, since I've got this in front of me. Okay, I started it on February 15th, 2022. I finished it on August 4th, 2020. Two, and I fully finished it on the 31st of August 2024. So 
yeah, as you can see, finishing is not my favorite thing. I like the stitching part. If, if you need to keep track of your stitching though, I would recommend one of these. And then let me just show you the other thing that's so cool about these. Um, so then each project has, you know, a page dedicated to it. And so then you can, you can put down, um, you know, the pattern name, um, the designer name, the date you started it, the date you finished it. Um, and then of course the fabric you used, your fabric count, and then you can, you know, make yourself notes if, um, on the floss used. Um, if you want to make any notes about stitching, yeah, I mean, whatever you want to record. And then the other thing that I have done is I have, I've added little um, pictures when they're fully finished to, um, to my journal. Although I haven't taken a picture of Redbird Sampler yet, so I need to do that and add it to the Redbird page. So anyway, that's super fun. Um, I'm kind of a paper and pencil pencil girl, so um, I kind of like the tactile ness of um, a paper journal. So okay, so that is um, that is my big FFO, not FFO, FO finished object. Okay, another FO finished object is by Heart and Hand, Ye Old Crow. I've been working on this. I do not know why, but this one, oh my goodness. I have had more oopses and froggings on this one, <laughs> but I finally finished it. So there is Ye old Crow. And this was not my idea. I saw somebody um, had stitched it and posted their, um, their finished product on uh, Instagram and they put the um, pumpkin in the um, wonderful orange and then they did the vines and the leaves in the green. And I'm like, I'm doing that because I just think that just adds such a cool dimension to the piece. So I just, um, you know, pulled a couple of um, oranges and, or, you know, and tried out a couple of oranges. The first orange I picked, um, I didn't like. It was a little too... I don't know, it was a little too dull. It wasn't as bright as this. And then the, um, I think I, I think I was on my third green until I found a green that I liked. So I do know on that one though, how I'm gonna finish it. I, I've got this um, paddle board um, and this came in some sort of a box. I don't remember, I don't remember who, who the box was from, what the box was for. But anyway, this has been riding around in the craft room. And so I'm gonna take this out into the garage and I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna give it a sand and spray paint it. And I haven't quite decided yet what color. I'm thinking I'm either gonna do black or green. Yeah, I have, you know, black or green. One of those will look great. I thought about doing the orange, but um, I think I think black or green. So that's my, that's my plan. But subject to change without advance notice. You know how it goes around here. You know, you know, squirrel, right? <laughs> okay, so um, I've got one more finish, and it's actually a start and a finish since um, since last I saw you. Let me take that back behind my camera. So I am, uh, apparently I'm doing all the retreats in September. I signed up for Friend Stitch, which is put on by Bent Creek. And I love, love, love Bent Creek. They're one of my favorite designers. And so they um, sent us um, a pre-stitch. And so this is the pre-stitch. Um, I think it's called Happy Heart. And so I started this on Monday. I finished it on Wednesday, so just yesterday this week. And then they're going to show us how to finish it um, during the Zoom retreat. So Friends Stitch is all Zoom, it's no in-person. And I do not know what this fabric is. It's a 32 count something. It was riding around on my desk and I thought, oh, I'm just gonna stick it on that. It worked out great with the exception of um, the border here was a completely different charted color. And this is, that's the same color in here. My fabric 
absolutely matched DMC 648. It couldn't have been more perfect. If you're wondering what this really looks like, Go pull 648, that's what color it is. So I had to do, um, I had to do some auditioning of colors. Thank you, Sheila. Um, Sheila of All Crossed, um, All Crossed Up. She um, is also attending Friend Stitch and I'm like, what did you do? Cause I know she was saying she was having trouble with her fabric also not showing that. And she gave me a list of like five colors. This is what I chose. I chose 3782. Yeah, 3782. And you can see it. So, yep. On Saturday, I will be sitting in front of my computer and we'll see what the ladies have in store for us for finishing this little guy. That was a that was a really quick, um, fun little stitch. Um what was what was really hysterical is um, Sheila and I were at Acorns and Threads together on Saturday. Is that right? Saturday, yeah. And she was she was buying all the floss to do this, and she had the list of them. And I was like, oh, I you know I've got the DMC, no trouble. I got home, I could only find two, <laughs> and it was like. Well, I suppose I can dig through project bags and in the end I drove to Michaels and just bought them all. I should have <laughs> I should have bought them with Sheila at the same time so I wouldn't have had to uh, make that extra trip, but that's okay. It worked out fine. Um it's stitched, it's ready. Friend stitch, here I come. All right. So, let's see here. I did have um only I think only two pieces that have stitched on. That's probably not 100% true, but I can't remember. Um, I probably stitched on the Satsuma Monster House, which is around here somewhere. I'm not going to dig for it, but I didn't have that much progress. And then I took two whips, well, actually a new start and a whip down to Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit. So... Let me show you my new start um, and my whip that I worked on at the um, Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit, which is put on by Acorns and Threads, which is down in Portland, Oregon. Um, it was lovely. It was so much fun, you guys. And I'll talk a little bit about my experience at Friend Stitch, but let's talk about whips first. So I have been, um, I have been working on Beach Rat by the Artsy Housewife, and Gigi was there. It was so fun to meet her in person. I was, you know, a, com a complete stalker. I hugged her. I don't know if she's a hugger, but I'm a hugger, so forgive me, Gigi, if you're not a hugger. <laughs> so anyway, um, when I picked up this piece, I've got, I've, I've had the words in, I've had the beach in, and I had, you know, the few, few little um, leaves down here, but I had I only had like the top row of the seagull's head in. So I got all of that done at front, at um, Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit. And look how great that eye is. Doesn't it, doesn't it, doesn't it look like that guy is just looking straight at you? Glorious. So I got a lot of stitching in on Beach Rat. And there were, um, there was one other gal, um, I know of for sure that was, um, stitching beach rat and she was stitching it on a 40 count and I'm stitching it on 32. So mine was ginormous <laughs> in comparison to her cute 40 count stitch. They both look great. It's just all what your preference is. Um, I like 40, I, I, I like the look. I like the smaller look of um, things stitched on 40 count, but I also enjoy um, the space of 32 count. I love two over two. So that's kind of my jam. So I just went with my jam. I'm really happy with, um, with my progress. And this chart um, by Gigi, oh my goodness. It is, it is a joy to stitch on the chart. It's big. You can see it. You don't have to take it down someplace and photocopy it and blow it up. It's just a really great chart. It's really super nice. 
The other thing that I stitched on while I was at Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit was a new start. So um, I had mentioned either last floss tube or the floss tube before that, that um, I had bought um, a spool from Pete's Bee Skep to finish a tiny town on. And yet, even though I bought the spool, I have never stitched a tiny town. And that's on my, you know, on my bucket list. I've got to stitch a tiny town and get it on that spool. So Debbie reached out to me and said, hey, why don't we start a tiny town at Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit. And so um, Debbie, myself, and Wanda, we all sat um, sat down and we started our tiny towns. And so the one that I decided to stitch on is Seaside Ta Tiny Town, which should surprise absolutely no one. <laughs> With my love of all things water and boats and seasides, yeah, this was this was a shoe in for the one that I was going to start. So um, I have once again I'm stitching it on a 32 count, two over two, and this is uh, you know this is nothing fancy. This is just um, what am I trying to say? It is. What is uh, oh, it's got the tag on it. Duh, it's. A linen called Beautiful Beige. And here is my start. All right. Yeah, so I got the lighthouse, three seagulls, a couple of clouds, and part of a crab stitched. Fun, right? I mean, look how, look how fun. So I've got over to here. I just adore it. I'd, it's just so fun. Um, and what's, what's, um, what's really cool is there ha, there, there's a group of stitchers that um, meet at um, a YMCA in Kent. And I live in Kent. And so I knew that there were stitchers, but I... Somehow I didn't quite know where they met. And so I went up there this Monday and um, stitched with them and then put a, put a few stitches into Seaside Tiny Town. So um, I am very much looking forward to continuing to stitch with that group of stitchers. And I think this will be, this will be my Monday project with the stitchers. So, oh, and then this bag was given to me at, um, Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit by Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Thank you for my bag. I love it. Um, anyway, it was, um, it was, you know, it was just so nice. She, um, I'll tell you the story. <laughs> She had shown on um, the Acorns and Thread Zoom her small exchange piece. It's coffee themed, right? Coffee, right? I love coffee. And it's got all, it had all sorts of little cute coffee mugs. And then she made it into this adorable basket. And everybody's like, Robin, that's yours. You got to get that thing. Well, lo and behold, we're standing in line to put our exchanges on the exchange table, or, you know, the Smalls exchange table. And Jackie was a few people in front of me. And I'm like, oh shoot, I know what bag her thing is in now. And I'm, and I'm talking to myself and I'm like, I, I really want, I really want Jackie's Small. However, this is cheating. <laughs> I'm like, I can't pick that bag because I know what it is and that's cheating. And I know that if I do that, every time I pick up Jackie's amazing piece, I will think you cheated. And so when it came time for the Smalls Exchange, I did not pick it up. I told myself I couldn't do it. It, it's not right. So I picked up something different. And I told Jackie that and I said, Hey, Jackie, I just got to tell you that I didn't I didn't pick up your piece. And I, you know, I told her I told her my story that I just told you. And she came up to me. 
um, either the next day or later that same day. And she's, and she gave me this project bag for being honest, <laughs> but it's coffee themed. I don't know how she found it or where she found it, but I mean, that was so nice of her. I, I really, I really appreciate that, Jackie. That was just so nice. So I have, I have my new um, Seaside Tiny Town in this bag from Jackie. It will make me think of her fondly every single time I zip open the bag. So, <laughs> so there's your, um, there's your true confession. I almost cheated at the um, Smalls Exchange. Whew. Dodged a bullet there. <laughs> So anyway, that was super nice. So, um, all right, I've showed you, I've showed you my start. I've showed you my beach rat whip. What else? I guess I can talk about um, Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit. I got um, uh, the pleasure of sitting with six other really wonderful, fabulous stitchers. I... I've got to tell you, this retreat was so fun, so soul-fillingly fun. I, this is, is this the third one? I think this is the third one. I've gone to all of them and it was, it was just great. The, the vibe was really, really chill and really, you know, uplifting, um, they did a really fun thing. They didn't just give you your swag bag when you registered. They parsed it out over the three days of the retreat. So all of a sudden, you know, there'd be some wonderful thing at your at your place from Acorns. It was it was super fun. Um, my girlfriend Lynn and I drove down on Thursday, so we checked into the hotel the day before. Um, Stitch Summit started. It started on Friday because it started at 10 a.m. We're at least a three-hour drive away um, from, you know, here down to the Portland area, and we thought we don't want to get up in the middle of the night and then be completely wiped out when we get there. So we, we, we splurged and, you know, spent an extra night in the hotel so that we would be fresh and ready to go. And we were, and we just had a really fun time. So my table mates were of course myself, my girlfriend, Lynn, my friend, Sheila, our friend, Denise. Denise had a new friend with her, um, Neela. Next to Neela was Debbie. And next to Debbie was Caroline who is the pokey little pineapple. I got amazing gifts from my table mates. Um, Caroline made everybody a project bag. Isn't this cute? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, and in fact, this is what Beach Rat is now living in. So this, I understand that it's an owl, but it's a bird. So I figured this was a really good project bag to put another bird piece in. So thank you, Caroline. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, Debbie made us these adorable little Oort containers and it was filled with chocolate. You will notice that the chocolate is not in here. I don't know where it went. Things happen, right? Especially around chocolate. <laughs> Uh, my friend Sheila, she gave us this great bag. Look at my, and each, um, each bag had a cute little, um, I think of this as a counting pin. Um, and so I chose the bumblebee and then inside this is kind of like a drink coaster, which is a fabulous idea. So if you've got a beverage sitting next to you, um, that's, um, sweating, it just falls right onto your little drink coaster. And then she also gave us um, more, I guess these would also be counting pins. I love them. You can never have enough of those. And then there, oh, there's still a the candy in here. Yay, I love these. I love these peppermint candies. So that was from um, Miss Sheila. And then um, my girlfriend Lynn gave everybody 
um, a box of truffles. Um, you'll notice once again, there's no chocolate here. And then Denise gave us these, these. You guys, they fold up, they squish up, and it's another art container. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, people are so clever. I never would have thought of that. That was absolutely amazing. Um, there, there were um, many, many treasures um, that were, um, you know, left at our table. I have put them all in here. This bag was part of our, um, part of our swag from the retreat. And there's a sticker that says, out of my way, I'm on my way to Acorns and Threads. I don't, you, I'm sure you can't see that, but you know, that could totally live on here. It could go on the back of your car. Um, yeah, just, I mean, what, what, a, what a great thing. Um, so I am not going to go through all of, you know, the treasures, but let me know, let me tell you that I love each and every one of them and they are a treasure. And thank you so much for thinking of me, for leaving them at my place. Uh, I I can't wait to go through all of them and, and figure out what their home is because <laughs> there's gotta be a home for them somewhere. So um, there was that, uh, let's see here. So like I said, on Thursday, we went down. Friday, the retreat started and then, you know, just treasures just sh started showing up at your place. Uh, let's see here. This was one of, oops, sorry. This was one of our treasures. This again is an ORC container. And this, I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, it's got an acorn with um, a needle and thread through it. Um, this is made from reclaimed uh, silver. Oh, really cool. And it's by Michelle Inc. Designs. I guess she and um, Janine worked on the design on that. So that was one of one of our treasures from the retreat. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Then we got this little guy, which has two incredibly strong magnets with the Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit logo. It's got some little feet and this will, this works great if you've got one of those stitching mats because of those feet, it doesn't slide around. Really super clever. We also received um, a phone stand um, with the Acorns and Threads logo on it. Um, Beth Twist's husband, I think his first name is Matt, but don't quote me, um, he, made these he's got um a laser cutter fabulous 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 um that also was um part of our um part of our haul from the retreat and then and then the project all right the project you guys is amazing so Teresa Kogut and Beth Twist were our two designers. And so they worked on patterns um, without necessarily sharing with each other what they were doing. And then when they got together, they were like, oh my gosh, these work perfectly together. At least that's the story as I understand it. So from Beth, we we got this and beth says the um the building is based on her house they have a stream through their property and they have little beavers on their property on in that stream um then of course they've got rabbits um they're beekeepers so there's there's some um bee houses her cat and then let's see um douglas fir tree and then a squirrel and then um, some robins up on the top. So anyway, super cute. And then the, um, the phrase at the bottom says, I'm going to have to flip it around. Distance means so little when someone means so much. What 
what an adorable, what an adorable um, and, you know, heartfelt um, sentiment. So this is Teresa's pattern. And Teresa, I can't remember what she said. If this is based on her, her studio, I can't quite remember. But it's, it's a place that's um, dear to her. Now her trees, she said, are a little bit um, smaller than the big ones in Beth's pattern because they have, they don't have the big Douglas fir trees um, in Michigan, like Beth has in Oregon. So um, she um, has a deer. She said they see deer in their property. Um, she sees raccoons quite often. Um, she says they have um, a pond on their property, so there's little ducks. And then she also um, put in some some birds, and then it's the same um, same sentiment on the bottom. However, um, they have designed it so you could stitch it together, and then they've charted it so the the um, sentiment goes all the way across if you stitch them as one. So, of course, we received all of the flosses. Um, Teresa's kit included some note cards. Um, Beth's kit was um, in this really cool canvas bag, and she stamped the little beaver. Um, and then the, um, the beaver and the raccoon are named Willow and Finn. And Beth's in Beth's kit, her husband made um, a thread drop with Willow and Finn on it, along along with that sentiment. So that's amazing. Um, we also received the linen for the piece. Um, it's a 36 count maple bar linen from Cedar River. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, and then there were also um, a couple of little stickers that we can put on our water bottles, which I love. I love decorating my water bottle. And then the day after we got the complete kit, there was a bonus gift. And there is a Biscornu pattern, which, which is um, highlighting our two, our two mascots, Willow and Finn along with some buttons, again, that were etched by Beth's husband. So, I mean, just, uh, just couldn't, couldn't be better. It, it's a really nice kit. I, I am looking forward to stitching it. Very much looking forward to stitching it. All right. What have I not told you? Um, I guess I, I just would like to say, you know, thank you to Janine and the entire Acorns and Threads crew. Thank you to Beth and Teresa. Thank you to Beth's husband, Matt, for all of the things that he created for us. Um, thank you to Tracy Horner. Um, she was doing tech support with Tasha. Uh, gosh, Roz, the original owner of Acorns and, and Threads, was there. Um, Janine McGowan of the Blue Flower, she stopped in for, um, for a minute. In fact, on Thursday when Lynn and I went to Acorns and Thread, Jean, Jean, Jean McGowan was there, so I got to chat with her for a few minutes. That was super fun. Um, yeah, just so much, so much goodness from that retreat. It was just absolutely amazing. They have already announced who our designers are going to be next year. Um, Gigi, who is the artsy housewife who designed Beach Rat, is going to be one of next year's designers. And then Krista West, who just published a book called Everyday Folk, who is also going to be at Acorns and Threads for their... Um, open house on the 26th of October. She's the second designer and I I couldn't, ah, I couldn't be happier. I'm like, can I register now? Cause that's going to be amazing too. So this retreat was amazing. The upcoming retreat sounds like it's going to be amazing. 
um, we had a funny little incident with um, a football team that was staying at the hotel. Um, the University of South Dakota Coyotes football team was staying also at the Hilton Embassy Suites and they were supposed to play Portland State and Portland State um, ended up with um, ill players so the game got canceled so these poor kids were on the atrium um, seeing all his crazy cross stitchers and then at one point I think it was Margaret got onto the PA and said okay We've got a football team. We've got a, a, you know, a football team that's here until 5 p.m. They're, they're as bored as can be. So we're all going to adopt a player and teach them how to cross stitch. And everybody's like, oh, well, that sounds interesting. And then Margaret's like, wait a minute, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, in the end, I think it was um, Audrey Stitchy Witch 42 went out um, with... Oh my gosh, was it Jolyn? I think it was Jolyn, don't don't hold me to that. But I think Audrey and Jolyn went out to talk to the football um, players and they convinced like 10 of them to come in and sit down and pretend like we were going to actually teach them how to cross stitch. And I guess one of the players actually said, hey, my grandma used to do this. <laughs> So if you're on Instagram and you see pictures from the Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit and some football players, some big, tall football players, that's the story behind those pictures. Hysterical. Absolutely hysterical. And they were super good sports about it. They, they, they just kind of, you know, they went with it. It was, it was really fun. Um, what did I buy? What did I buy? All right, I got to tell you a little little backstory on the buying. So, if you have an Acorns and Threads bag, as I do, if you bring your bag down, you get a little bit of a discount. So I always bring my bag. My girlfriend Lynn, she forgot her bag when she got to my house. However, lucky for Lynn, I have two bags. So I went scurrying into the craft room here and pulled out my second Acorns and Threads bag. And I thought, oh, I'll just, you know, loan it to Lynn and then she can give it back to me. I got a hold of that second bag. It had stuff in it. It had floss, fabric, and five patterns. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is bad. <laughs> Because the last time I was at Acorns was probably four months ago, maybe five months ago. I'm like, if I have projects that I don't remember that are sitting in a bag, I might have too much stuff. So because of that, it kind of tamped down my, my, my spend thrift ways. So... I did not go completely bonkers. I bought some linen. I bought a project bag. This project bag by Crafty Cory, which I adore. It looks like water. Yum! That couldn't have been better. Um, I did. I did buy one of her stitching mats, which I used, and I love this darn thing. And look at look at that cool look at that cool fabric look at those bright yummy colors and then i bought um pretty bird by the artsy housewife yay i can hardly wait to start that i bought um the lighthouse chart by um cottage garden samplings so you know more water themed stuff, right? <laughs> I did pick up from Stitches by Ethel, her October 31st pin keep. That cat standing on that pumpkin couldn't be girl, couldn't be cuter. And then last but not least, I did pick up the Honeycomb Biscornu. They had this on the brag table um, at the Stitch Summit. I've never seen a, a Biscornu um, where the top and the bottom were different fabrics. I thought that was really, fa really fabulous. So, you know, 
for that reason, I couldn't leave that behind. The other thing that was there was just yards of um, Cedar River linen by my friend Jody. Hi, Jody. Um, anyway, so I picked up two cuts of, um, I think these are newer colors for her. I got Spindrift, which is a beautiful um, lighter beige. And then I got Maple Bar, which is also what came in our kit. And then I decided to go completely nuts and I bought a 20 count Ada. And uh, this is Overcast. Overcast is not one of her new colors. Now she, that, I think that was one of the original colors. But anyway, those are the three pieces of fabric that I bought. That's it, you guys. That's all I purchased at Acorns, which is plenty. <laughs> Plenty, plenty, plenty. So in terms of um, plans, I am way behind on my little monthly challenges that I like to do. Um, my whip go, I still have one um, whip go call left to do. And then my magazine monthly cross stitch challenge put on by um, Robin and Carolyn Zook. I've only completed two out of six. So I'm gonna focus on those. I need to get caught up on um, Magazine Monthly Cross Stitch Challenge pieces. So I think I've got things like um, My Little Women, Hyperborea, Monster House, Huckleberry Farm. Huckleberry Farm I really wanna finish by the end of the year. Um, Oh, and my um, 12 Days of Christmas um, stockings. So I have, I have got to get, I have got to get my, myself back on track. So wish me luck. I'm hoping to get all of that done <laughs> before September runs out, but we'll, we'll get there. The last thing that, um, that happened that was super fun was the, um, there's a bag down here. The um, the Stitch Summit, they do they do bingo every year. Every year they do bingo. I won the blackout. Here is the winning card. I won the blackout, and they handed me this bag. This bag. Look how full this bag is, you guys. And. I thought, oh, I'm just going to pick something out of the bag. And so I, I glanced in and I was like, oh, what's in here? And they were like, no, 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 you'll get the whole thing. What? What do you mean I get the whole thing? Like, Robin, you get the whole thing. There is so much goodness in here. It's insane. So there's a, um, an Ode to the Ort kit by um, With Thy Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais. There is a mug with one of Beth Twist's really funny um, phrases, baby got backstitch, and a needle minder from Rebel Stitcher. And then, and then, look at all these patterns. There's, you know, there's a Plum Street, there's a sampler, and it's got the 103 silks and the linen. There's a cross stitch and country craft magazine, which I'm looking forward to looking through. There's a pattern for Hardanger, which I am very interested in, plus a punch needle pattern, another sampler, and Bird Box by Jeanette Douglas, which we all know, Robin loves those boxes. And then last but not least is a Madame Chantilly pattern. Ooh, good thing I didn't spend a whole lot of money at Acorns. Because <laughs> now I have even more projects to try to figure out how to fit in. <sighs> I am overwhelmed and I am so grateful. So 
for all of you that I met at um, Pacific Northwest Summit. It was so lovely to meet you. I have one more thing that I really, really wanted to show you um, was what I received for the Smalls Exchange. Give me half a second here. I thought I brought it in here. It might be out in the living room. Give me one second, I'll be right back. Found it. Okay, this was what I um, got from the Smalls Exchange. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, it's got um, a pole on it and it says, I count, which is amazing. Um, I was able to find the lady who stitched it. Her name is Lara. And Lara, thank you. If you, I don't know if you watch me or not, but if you do, thank you. I thanked her in person, but I you know, wanted to say again how ah, thankful I am for this. And I'm already using it. I have got um, just all sorts of bits and bobs in here. I've got extra needles. I've got a corner gauge. Um, yeah, I've got I've got some some floss bling. Um, yeah, got a nail file because you can't you can't have too many of those hanging around. So that was um, what I received for my Smalls Exchange. That's it, you guys. I have got so much goodness on my desk. I am I am really thankful to each and every one of you that I met at the Stitch Summit. Um, yeah, so now I have to figure out where it all goes. <laughs> that will be the fun part, is looking at all my treasures one at, one at a time and figuring out where they go. All right, that's it for me. The sun just went behind a cloud. Darn it, darn it, darn it. That means fall's coming. Stop it. <laughs> All right. Have a great day. I will see you on my next floss tube. Usually in, usually do them every two weeks and stitch happy, my friends. See you later. Bye.